Welcome to our exploration of terrain physics in game engines. Today, we're tackling a thought-provoking question from a developer who's been delving into terrain systems. They ask, how can we efficiently provide geometry for terrain physics while leveraging shaders? Let's break it down. Welcome back to another technical video. Today, I'll be going through your question, answering it, and hopefully finding that solution you're looking for. Guys, remember to say just a little bit crazy, just like me, and hopefully you work through to that resolution. Now, let's continue on. Let's begin by understanding the role of shaders in terrain systems. Shaders are programs that run on the GPU to handle rendering tasks efficiently. You mentioned that shaders can generate geometry, such as using vertex shaders for positions or tessellation shaders for level of detail. This is indeed a common practice in modern game engines. However, your concern about the results of shader computations being discarded is valid. By default, the output of shaders is not stored for later use but there are ways to retain this data. One effective method is to use render targets or buffers. This allows you to capture the output of your shaders and store it in a texture or buffer that can be accessed by the CPU. In conclusion, while shaders typically discard their output, you can implement techniques to store the generated geometry for use in physics simulations or other systems. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. To efficiently provide geometry for terrain physics, we can utilize shaders and transform feedback. After rendering a frame, data is stored in the back buffer. Transform feedback allows us to capture transform geometry into a vertex buffer for reuse, enabling CPU collision detection with terrain. You can generate terrain using a density function, which describes the terrain surface in 3D space. Positive values indicate solid terrain, while negative values indicate empty space. This function is crucial for collision detection. For collision detection, the density function must be accessible in the shader. Techniques like CUDA can also be used, but they require sharing the density function, complicating transform feedback implementation. On the CPU side, terrain is typically stored in RAM as vertex and index buffers. This allows for easy access to a collision mesh, which simplifies collision detection. For further reading, check out resources on transform feedback and procedural terrain generation. These concepts are foundational in many terrain solutions. And that's it. I hope that helped find the resolution that you're looking for. If it did, please hit subscribe. I really appreciate it. And until next time, I hope you have a good one. Cheers.